Hello, everybody. Welcome uh, to our latest webinar, which is on the question of can momentum be reformed, which is a slightly contentious question, seeing as uh, two of our speakers <laughs> believe it can be. So I'm very glad you've joined us in this uh, session because it is an, a very uh, live discussion. Momentum is, is just about to start its uh, elections, internal elections for the National Constitution Committee or Constitution Group, I think it's called, NCG. Um, and um, both Alan Gibbons and, um, sorry, Alan Gibson, right? Alan Gibbons. Gibbons, sorry. And Sean and Jeffrey um, are both standing for the forward momentum slate in those internal elections. Um, I have to admit, when I first heard about uh, forward momentum, I did think, what a massive waste of time. <laughs> and I will explain it a little bit more because um, like I presume most people in the audience, I joined Momentum as soon as it was set up in order to support Jeremy Corbyn and to fight back against the, the, the attacks that we would know would be coming. I helped to set up a Momentum in Sheffield and was involved in preparing for the first democratic conference of Momentum, which was supposed to be taking place in February, 2017. And then like probably most of us know, John Lanzmann, a few weeks before conference uh, staged what I think can only be described as a coup. He got a slim majority on the very small Momentum Steering Committee uh, to vote against conference happening, basically stopping it. He then presented his own nightmare of a constitution, which abolished all democratic structures, including the Steering Committee itself. It was put to members in a rather interesting way, if I remember this all rightly. Uh, he wrote an email informing everybody that if you consent to this new constitution and the abolition of all democracy, you don't have to do anything. Thoughtfully, though, he also supplied an email address um, that you could uh, fire off your resignation to if you wish to opt out. And that was the input that comrades had in uh, drafting the constitution. So there was no chance for any input, any amendments, anything at all. You either like it or, you know, F off. There were lots of warning signs uh, before that, of course, in October 2016, when Jackie Walker was um, suspended from the Labour Party on ludicrous charges of anti-Semitism at having been illegally filmed at Labour Party conference, uh, John Lansman was very quickly moved to demote her as vice chair of Momentum. Rather than defending her and call out the ludicrous charges, uh, she was hung out to dry. Um, I think at that time we were beginning to see Lansman's journey into the full-blown witch hunter that he is today. Part of the reason uh, actually that uh, Labour Against the Witch Hunt was set up, which I'm uh, involved in, um, it was a huge mistake, I think, that the main organisation in support of Jeremy Corbyn folded the way it did over those false and exaggerated charges of anti-Semitism. And it actually, I think it helped, this folding helped it to get much, much worse. Um, and it did get much, much worse of we all, that we all now it, it know now. Um, it also found reflection in John Lanzmann uh, using momentum to push for the adoption of the so-called uh, definition on anti-Semitism published by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, which is a huge attack on freedom of speech and consciously conflates anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism in its list of examples. Uh, the anti-climax for me uh, personally, over which I left momentum, I must confess, in a, in a half was when uh, John Lansman demanded that Chris Williamson be expelled from the Labour Party. Um, nothing that Chris did or said was even vaguely anti-Semitic and that shows in, in, the, in the leaked report. Uh, he was suspended for basically defending comrades like Jackie Walker, Mark Wadsworth, speaking uh, for Labour against the witch hunt events, etc. He was sadly the only MP who stood up to what I believe was a huge witch hunt, which is ongoing um, as, as chair of Labour Against the Witch Hunt. I've just been getting today three more uh, letters of suspensions I've been seeing from, from comrades. Um, they're, they're now under Keir Starmer. Um, I actually believe that Lanzmann thought he's doing what Corbyn wanted him to do and was perhaps pushing or saying some of the things that Jeremy Corbyn perhaps couldn't or wouldn't say himself. He uh, has a certain point there, if, he, if that is what he believes, I think. Um, the leaked report, um, and with Law and LLA are organizing a conference on this issue, does unfortunately show that in the futile attempt to appease the right, um, Jeremy Corbyn and his allies, Jenny Formby, etc., cetera, um, did throw some of their most active supporters and activists to the wolves. 
and momentum supported and internalized this witch hunter belief, for example, by barring uh, expelled members from being members of momentum, by allowing the right wing in the compliance unit, which is now called legal and governance, to decide who can and cannot be a member of uh, momentum. And now this is this is getting now more to the to the area where I'm really interested, really, and I don't mean that in a sarky way, but really interested to see what forward momentum uh, plans to do because. Momentum's constitution in, introduced by, by John Lanzmann makes it almost impossible to change the Momentum's constitution, uh, which is what you need if you want to install proper democratic decision-making structures in Momentum. And I would really like to hear your, um, uh, your thoughts on this. We've produced a paper on this, which is on our website, and um, we'll put that up with the, with the video as well. There's 20 of the minimum of 36 members of the National Constitutional Group uh, will be elected by Momentum members. The rest is appointed by unions and other affiliates. So that is a majority, but you would have to get a, a pretty clean sweep to get a clear majority on, on that uh, group, and that's in a constitution group. And the only way you can change a constitution if, is, is if it's a change is anonymously agreed by the NCG, or if it's agreed by a majority of NCG members, and that needs to be including a majority of the members nominated by affiliate, affiliated trade unions, then you'll get a ballot. Uh, and a ballot is organized and at least 50% of all votes cast must have been in favor of that amendment. If, however, there is no majority on, th on the NCG, including a majority on the, on the affiliated trade unions, and if they don't agree with the proposal, um, then you need to get 10% of the, the, the Momentum's members uh, which is 4,000 members, need to put forward that proposal. A ballot has to be held in which at least 30% of those eligible to vote will have to vote in favour. 12,000 people, if 40,000 is in fact the, the correct number. And they need to make up at least 50%, i.e. they need to be a, a majority. So 12,000 people, if a majority on the CNC, NCG does not agree with a, with a proposal. So that seems... A, big, big hurdle. Then there's, of course, the database. John Lanzmann is the sole director and shareholder of Momentum Information Limited, which, which controls the data. And he's one of five directors um, of the other company, which, is, which employs Momentum staff. Um, and they're all close, close allies of him. Would I put it beyond him to simply walk off with both if, if he's actually beaten in some vote? I would not. How would comrades deal with, with this problem? Also, we hear he's... Um, resigned the chairman of ship, obviously, of, of Momentum, but only in, in return for some kind of, of deal. Who with? I don't know. Maybe, maybe you guys know. Uh, a deal that he can keep his seat uh, on a left slate for the NEC, i.e. that you know, the left proposes him to uh, continue to be serving on the NEC. Um, what's your view on that? Would you be prepared, prepared to back him to go back on the NEC? The LLA, uh, leadership at the moment certainly would not. <laughs> I think he's played a huge, hugely destructive role uh, in the Labour Party. So I have changed, uh, I have changed my view on, on your campaign quite a lot, I have to admit. Um, you've, you've really, hats off, I think you've run a really vibrant and, and really democratic campaign. It looks really good. You clearly hit a nerve. Um, and clearly it's not been a waste of time. But what is your plan? And I'd, you know, I'd really like to know that. What is your plan if you say win 10, 20? perhaps even, you know, 10, 15, or even 20 of the 36 seats. Um, there is the added problem of momentum renewal, um, which has managed to get some impressive backers. I don't know how, but, you know, he's managed somehow to get John Trickett, Ian Lavery, Grace Blakely, Aaron Vastani. I mean, I, to be honest, anybody who's, who signs up with momentum renewal, I'm, either you have not learned anything in the last five years, or... He's promised you something. It's 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 dodgy. Um, we've invited them. We didn't even get a reply. That's why I'm going to be mean about them now. Mm -hmm. But I think though though that campaign and with the big names that will reduce your potential number of seats on the NCG. I think. So what is your plan if you have a minority? You know how would you? I think you have to invest a lot of time and effort. But we'll be hitting barrier after barrier after barrier. Is there a point where you'll say? okay, that's it, we'll, we'll leave, or it makes more sense to join something else, or, you know, sort of like this, you know, the Labour Left Alliance is already operating under democratic structures and, and transparent, et cetera, et cetera. So what is your sort of 
medium and long-term strategy. I'd be really interested in, in, in that. I've just seen a, somebody's asking, does Momentum have 40,000 members? That's what they claim on, on their website anyway. I've just checked it again. Um, funnily enough, uh, to be counted as a Momentum member, uh, to be not counted as Momentum members, that's, the, that's a bit like to Hotel California, I think you can never leave. But now they've put into uh, practice that you have, if you haven't paid for 15 months, then you're not considered a momentum member, which is a very flexible, uh, flexible term, to put it mildly. So I'm really glad um, that you've joined us today, and I'm really looking forward to um, learning more about your campaign and seeing where you're planning on going. So thank you very much. I'm bringing in uh, Alan as a next speaker. Okay, doke. So I was just answering somebody what the membership is. Um, right, I'm I, I'm not going to do it in exactly the same style as you because I want to talk about the political context first. So my name is Alan Gibbons. I am the Secretary of Liverpool Walton CLP. Um, I'm Northwest, one of the Northwest Forward Momentum candidates. I'm a long-term um, National Union Teachers member. I was president of Knowsley NUT. I'm a retired NEU member and. Um, RCLP is Labour's safest in the country, 84.7%. We nominated uh, Rebecca Long-Bailey and Richard Bergen uh, by a massive majority in RCLP. Um, we voted for Joe Bird, Mo Asam and Mehmood Mirza for the NEC and we're affiliated to the um, Jewish Voice for Labour. So we've taken a consistent and I think principled position throughout uh, now, the context for me is the pandemic's going to ask huge political and economic questions of us all. And as we go into this, we can see the instability. We can see the instability in what's happening now with uh, the Cummings affair, where the, the Tory party, um, Boris Johnson lost 20 points virtually overnight. There's immense political instability in this country. And that means we need a leadership, a fighting socialist um, party to face it. And we were trying to get that during Jeremy Corbyn. That's where probably many people here rejoined the Labour Party to do that. And I joined Momentum as part of that energy and desire to have a socialist Labour government. And the cuts for us are huge. Liverpool's local government cuts, uh, Liverpool's going to get cut 32%. Knowsley is getting cut 39%. And then you look at the class basis of this government, Wokingham is raising its uh, local government preset by 83%, Buckinghamshire by 41%. Now in that context, I don't think the idea of a moderate, uh, triangulating, don't intervene kind of Labour Party and we can see a whole series of issues where that looks very very dangerous indeed from the present from the new leadership one of course is the leaks and um, lots of the stuff that you said Tina at the start I think is we should relate it directly to the leaks that whole atmosphere that you talked about um, because we know now from those allegations that were leaked to Navarra media that there were people willing to lose an election. There were people who used the, the foulest sort of abuse about their own members. And that has got to be part of the context of everything we do. That is why we want to re-energise the Labour Party. And that's why we want to try and re-energise forward momentum, uh, sorry, momentum in order to do that. Now, when we take a look at can we reform it? There's going to be huge obstacles, there's absolutely no question. And you're right about lots of the structures of momentum. If we go through the kind of structures that I'm uh, talking about, momentum when we started, um, I'll give you an example. Margaret Greenwood stood in Wirral West. She was getting no resources. That's related to the labour leaks that we're talking about. Whereas Wirral South, with a bigger majority, was getting all the resources. We now know from those allegations, and they are allegations, but nobody's denied them, that it looks like they were diverting resources away from socialist and left candidates. Momentum was able to mobilize something like 150 to 200 people to go over to Wirral West and raise the majority from 440 to 5,000. And that was fantastically energetic. 
um, momentum supporters were able to go along and sustain the RMT picket line. Uh, a dispute over the um, keeping the guard on the train that was eventually successful. That's the potential of momentum. But then when we took a look at what happened, uh, that kind of bureaucratization um, that you talked about had terrible effects. In Liverpool, we didn't have control of our own membership and our own data. And that materially prevented us from being that kind of energetic, dynamic, interventionist, grassroots organization driving labor to the left that we wanted to be. The logic of that, of course, is local meetings start to shrivel. Um, the other uh, issue that obviously highlights it is if you take a look at one of the best candidates for an MP anywhere was Ian Byrne, founder of Fan Supporting Food Banks, uh, working class activist, exactly what you want. And we ended up in a, a virtual civil war in the left in Liverpool as another candidate, Angela Coleman, was put on. And sections of momentum were willing to join up with people on the right in order to prevent Ian. And some scurrilous things were done, you know, accusations put on social media, dredging up old posts, which is a kind of a culture that you've seen coming throughout the party. Uh, we won. We won the Ian Byrne campaign, but I think it was four votes. But that indicates some of the things you're talking about. Backroom deals across the country, selecting candidates without a proper open and transparent process. And that brings us on to the kind of momentum that we need, because um, I tend to call uh, momentum renewal continuity momentum. Even though there's lots of good people on that list, there's no question of where the initiative came from. Whereas we had primaries in which approaching 2,000 people took place to try and democratically, openly and transparently select a slate, the slate was selected by uh, continuity momentum to choose people. And I, today I was, I was made up, I, I challenged, um, got into a bit of a debate with one of the guys out of um, Momentum Renewal, and he said we should have open hustings. Now that is a step forward. We want to see open and transparent debate right the way through this election campaign. So we want to see an organisation that is member-led and member-owned. So that means you would have to win that argument. You'd have to get a pretty much, you know, good majority on that body. There'd have to be legal oversight and you would have to change the whole way that momentum is owned and run. Um, sounds like I'm not as much of an expert as you are, Tina. You've obviously been through this. But I mean, that is what we're aiming for. That is what we're in it for. And we have to judge if we don't get that sort of majority, how exactly we operate to press for that. But the point is it, that it's got to be democratic. There's got to be regular elections. This election was delayed and delayed and delayed. There's got to be regular conferences with delegates from real living groups, not rumps, real living groups that are vibrant and interventionist. And we see, you know, the political uh, results of this when you get Laura Parker, one of the leading members, actually supporting Keir Starmer in the election instead of supporting Labour candidates. And, you know, momentum ended up, I mean, I mean, I'll be a bit more polite than you, you know, but I mean, it ended up sidestepping issues that they should have taken up. And I'm going to talk mostly about the future because I'm interested in winning this and transforming the Labour Party. So we're a time limited campaign. People have said all sorts of nonsense, you know, that it's a faction. It's not a faction. Um, when you say, what are we going to do on the left? Catastrophically, we had a divided slate for the NEC by-elections. I mean, my slogan that I've put all over Facebook is heads together, knock. The reason we've now got David Evans as general secretary is because we had a divided slate. I mean, it's ludicrous. We had more votes for the right than the right, but we got defeated by them because we couldn't get every organization on the left. And so I'm not just involved, sorry, involved in forward momentum. I'm involved in Don't Leave Organize. Um, 
I'm a supporter of two of the groups involved in it. I just don't have time with the third. It's not, I've chosen not to be in it. I just don't have time to be in too many. And I, I want to see, quite simply, a democratic process, both, uh, sorry, for the NEC elections. Um, and that means I don't want to see people appointed or just stand. Some people have declared already for the NEC. They should go through uh, a democratic process in which all of the platforms of the left are involved. Um, if we talk about democracy, if a socialist party fights for democracy, then every democratic structure in that party should be decided but with democratic involvement of the membership transparency. It is ludicrous when you have deals and stitch-ups done. And I'm not naive, I know there's old talks in the background and stuff, but we have got to fight for that sort of democracy. Um, and I think we showed it by having the democratic and open primaries in forward momentum. And we had hustings, and always we're going to try um, to make sure that happened. It's a time-limited campaign. It's not a permanent organisation. Wouldn't have got involved in it if it was. And so it'll get disbanded after the NCG elections and everybody will be momentum, right? And I'll, I see these elections as a stepping stone to that united left. Anything else I want to say? And what sort of a party do I want to see in the end? I've got absolutely no illusions that we've got a long fight on our hands. Um, Keir Starmer is well ensconced in influence, but the slogan is don't leave organised. I'm not going to walk away. I want to see us win the idea that the Labour Party can be a democratic socialist organisation that intervenes in the communities, that intervenes in the picket lines, that supports campaigns. So just to finish off, what sort of party? Our CLP is central to stop the war in Liverpool. It has stood on every anti-imperialist demonstration. We're at the heart of every anti-fascist mobilisation. We are on every picket line, full stop. And uh, we run our CLP democratically, involve as many members as possible. So even during the pandemic, we're having Tribune readers groups where we discuss politics. We're doing a Q&A with our MP. And if every, and we're involved in delivering food and medicine to all the communities across North Liverpool. If every CLP had been doing that, we wouldn't have seen the withering of the grassroots of the Northern seats and we would have a Labour government. And the final thing I'm going to say is the biggest obstacle to that Labour government, as we know now in 2017, was an undemocratic clique within the leadership, within the officialdom of the Labour Party that would do anything not to have a socialist Labour government. And that's shameful and we have to, we have to reverse that. Thank you very much, Alan. Yes, your, your primaries were actually similar to what we're trying to do in terms of um, NEC candidate selection. So we've had a, we've asked our own members how who they would like to see on the NEC and um, we're hoping to uh, lead to a democratic culture that, that takes that on board as well in other left groups. I'm bringing in Alec Price now, who's also on the steering committee of the Labour Left Alliance and was involved in grassroots momentum. Okay, um, thanks Tina. Um, yeah, really enjoyed listening to, to what um, Alan had to say. Uh, I think he's a fantastic campaigner and he's right that if um, uh, the Walton CLP kind of model, you know, if we've been able to reproduce that across the whole country, um, then Labour would have had a much better chance um, of winning. Um, but there are key reasons why that, that didn't happen. And I think the history of momentum um, helps us understand why that isn't the case. Um, so I think, I think really we, you can have a big long discussion about um, winning um, momentum, which is a, which is one part of the Labour Party. Um, and I think Tina and Alan have actually outlined a lot of the points really well. Um, but the key question really is like, what is momentum and why should we invest all that time and energy into um, winning the leadership of it? What's it for? What, why, do we, why did momentum even exist in the first place? And the, the truth of the matter is that momentum was, the organised continuation of Jeremy Corbyn's first 
uh, Labour leadership campaign. And people only got excited about that in the way they did because the previous period was one of austerity, which meant uh, cuts to services, to jobs. It saw wages uh, frozen across the public se sector while prices were rising. Um, we saw the rise of the uh, what's sometimes called the precariat, uh, where uh, people who are workers aren't classified as workers and don't know when they're working from one day to the next, can't really plan the future. We saw whole um, services completely gutted and um, cut and fragmented um, and, and privatised. And what was the worst thing about the austerity? Because um, some people can accept a bit of austerity if there's uh, maybe a national crisis or, or, or whatever. Um, but the truth is a matter as to why we had the austerity in the first place was that bankers triggered an economic crisis across the whole world. They triggered a, a fundamental um, crisis of capitalism and they then had to be bailed out by the taxpayer. And so the reason given for the austerity was that we've got to pay off the debts incurred from bailing out the, the ruling class and particularly its financial, uh, its financial wing. So really what was happening was the workers and um, everyone else was paying for that capitalist crisis while the rich got richer, just to rub um, salt into the wounds. And so for five years, the anger that had been building up underneath the surface was quite huge. It had come out in certain forms, like we'd had the student protest in 2011, we'd had uh, huge trade union demos in London, um, where 750,000 people marched in the name of the trade unions against austerity. Um, we'd even had a, a big public sector strike in 2011 over pensions. Um, which was gaining more and more momentum up until the point where the, uh, the trade union leaders um, signed up to a heads of agreement which um, sort of pulled the rug under um, the, the movement for that, for, for that industrial action. So the whole, when Jeremy Corbyn threw his hat in the ring and um, by the grace of the self-described morons in the Parliamentary Labour Party found himself on the ballot and people had a chance to pay three pound and take a punt and vote on him as a, as a means of combating um, the austerity which we'd so far had to just endure, it got a huge echo. Um, and so it wasn't really actually that much of a surprise to me as soon as he, as he was on that ballot that, that, he, that he was gonna win. Um, but having won that election, most people who had suffered austerity and we're serious about defeating it, recognise that you can't just have one socialist at the top of the Labour Party and lots of members at the bottom, but in the middle, you've still got the pro-austerity Labour MPs, uh, the pro-war MPs. And by the way, uh, just to uh, remind ourselves what these MPs were like, after the financial um, crisis in 2007, 2008, uh, and there was um, obviously the big recession and then a general election in 2010, uh, the Labour Party shadow uh, or Chancellor, um, Alistair Darling, was asked at the time, um, would the Labour Party commit to making public sector cuts on a scale worse than Margaret Thatcher? And Alistair Darling said, yeah, Labour would. So these are the sorts of characters we're dealing with, people who would have quite happily have made working class people pay for that crisis. Um, they said that uh, the only difference really between them and the Tories was they would do it at a much uh, sort of slower pace. Um, unsurprisingly, that didn't, that didn't inspire people. Um, so, so Corbyn coming along and saying, we don't stand for austerity anymore. We don't stand for wars of... Uh, in the Middle East and, and abroad. That, that had a huge echo. And Momentum was the potential vehicle 
for making sure that he wasn't just isolated at the top and us members weren't stuck at the bottom with no uh, uh, rights or whatever, no way of making ourselves heard. Momentum should have been the opportunity to join the two up, to join the, the socialist at the top with the socialist members at the bottom. And that objectively means that those uh, middle layers of the MPs and the, the councillors and the, the, the uh, factional members of the staff, for example, they had to go. And the way that they had to go had to be by using the only force which was capable of doing it, which was through letting the members have the democratic rights to firmly assert themselves um, in terms of policy, in terms of structure, in terms of um, campaigning ideas for what was needed to galvanise um, not just Labour Party members, but the, the class as a whole, who are, are a vast majority of the country and who could have very easily um, used their votes to put into power uh, Jeremy Corbyn and a, and a, a socialist uh, Labour Party. But the momentum leadership sidestepped, as Alan said, that struggle. Because when it came to key decisions like uh, should Labour Party members be able to select their MP before each election, which you'd think is just a uh, simple democratic right, um, Momentum said, or certainly the leadership of Momentum said that they would not be campaigning on that issue. Most members wanted that issue, by the way, Mo members of Momentum and, and members of the Labour Party, but Momentum leadership refused to, to do it. And if, and if members weren't sure as to whether maybe now was the right time to push for, for something like mandatory reselection, uh, and members were being told by the Momentum leadership at the time that, oh, there's going to be a big boundary review forced through by the government, so we'll end up having to change all the MPs anyway, uh, which never happened, by the way. Um, if members weren't convinced that the time was right at the beginning to do it, I think they certainly were when they saw um, Hillary Benn arguing on behalf of the Labour Party to bomb Syria. And I think they certainly were when 172 MPs scuttled into Westminster to have a secret vote of no confidence in Jeremy Corbyn and eventually stand the hapless Owen Smith um, against Corbyn. People were ready for mandatory reselection at that time. People wanted a change. And again, the momentum leadership, the trade union leadership, and those advising Corbyn told us, don't fight the MPs. What we need is unity. Just go back to your CLP and um, prepare for a Labour government. Totally ignoring the fact that anyone looking at the Labour Party and seeing the difference between its leader its members and the MPs was going to look at it and thinking, well, actually, how can you be serious about bringing forward the change that you're talking about? Um, and I think that, um, I think that was sort of like the, the, the key issue, really. Now, Momentum played its role in that because whilst Momentum members were happy to have mandatory reselection and they were getting increasingly frustrated with people like John Landsman saying, oh, we're not going to campaign on it. There was a national committee in December 2016 that voted to finally have a founding conference for Momentum. And it so happened that I, I ended up being elected as the chair of the conference arrangements committee to make that, that conference happen. And when we were organising that, that conference. Mandatory, mandatory reselection was the, um, the motion that was being sent to us the most that people wanted to be discussed at that conference. And a lot of people, frankly, wanted the change of leadership and momentum as well. And people like John Landsman knew it. And so rather than um, have the democratic debate through the conference, they 
locked the conference arrangements committee out of their emails and they abolished all the structures and as Tina said they then said well uh, if you don't like it you can resign and the problem with that is it's created a real culture uh, within um, sections of the Labour left that basically think they can do what they want, they don't have to organise amongst grassroots members, they can basically do what they want, um, control a large database of Labour Party members, and then basically demand that that group backs their candidates for internal elections and unifies around momentum. But the problem momentum's got at the moment is um, because of everything they've done over the many years, uh, including not defending Jackie Walker, not backing open selection, all that sort of stuff, I think, I think they've actually managed to ruin the organisation as a whole. And for this reason, I think forward momentum, although it's really quite commendable, I think the, uh, the juice isn't going to be worth the squeeze, even if they win. <laughs> and then, so, um, and the reason why I say that is if, if you look at the, the, the sort of power of momentum, it has faded over the last couple of years. And I'll give two examples. 2018 Labour Conference um, for open selection. Now, we didn't organise through momentum to get open selection on the table. We actually organised outside of momentum. So I sat at home and wrote, uh, the motion for mandatory reselection got it through my CLP. Labour International did the same thing with a slightly differently worded motion, and then we campaigned on it. And uh, Labour International, in particular, made great videos, did petitions, started getting a, a database of their own supporters. Um, and it was that nothing internal in Momentum, but it was that which finally persuaded Momentum to. Uh, officially back open selection. But interestingly, when we got to the conference and this uh, compromise position kind of came out of the air um, from the NEC to uh, water down the trigger ballot, uh, which is a weird Labour Party mechanism that you have to go through before you can even have a normal selection procedure. When a crunch came to it, Mentum actually put a thing out saying, vote for the compromise. Which is where I think Mentum's power had, um, had faded a bit because in the past people would have gone along with that. But at that particular conference, 2018, two thirds of the CLPs voted against Mentum's recommendation to accept the watered down trigger ballot and voted with the open selection side, which said, no, reject this, we need to have the full debate and we need to have open selection on the table. Um, so although we lost the vote because of the, uh, the, the delegates from the affiliates, um, the open selection campaign had two thirds of that conference compared to Momentum's recommendation, which garnered one third. So I think Momentum's power had slipped a little bit then. Um, but to compound that, the 2020 um, NEC by-elections, where they refused to back Joe Bird, um, who was the candidate of the grassroots, who um, didn't have a big machine behind her, had a, but had a genuine sort of grassroots coalition that kind of appeared as the campaign got going. Uh, she had the most nominations up until the point she was suspended. Um, Momentum refused to back her and instead backed this guy called Lee Drennan. And Lee Drennan, um, going back to that 2018 Labour Party conference on open selection, Lee Drennan, who's also a member of Momentum's NCG and on the, um, on the Momentum renewal slate, Lee Drennan got up to the uh, rostrum at Labour Party conference to argue for the watered down trigger ballot, which meant in practice, he was saying, we're gonna boot open selection off the, uh, off the conference floor in, in, in entirely. Um, 
when it came to the the, the election itself in 2020, the CLP um, the CLP uh, by elections for the NEC. Joe Bird got more votes than Lee Drennan by quite some distance, uh, which wasn't a surprise to me, um, based on the campaigning she'd been done and based on Lee Drennan's record. But again, this kind of uh, uh, sort of uh, imposition, really, of momentum to say, right, it's our candidates are the left candidates, and no one else really exists. That backfired. They 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 lost the vote. But obviously, the, the real criminal thing about that was it wasn't the case that they just lost. It meant both sections of the left wing lost and the right wing won, and without all the consequences that have have come from that. So I, I really do wish you good luck with the Forward Momentum Initiative, and I hope that you win. Um, but even if you do win, is that Momentum brand, is that Momentum organisation really going to be worth it once you've won it, considering the situation it is now in? Um, and I, I'm very sceptical about you winning because at the end of the day, if John Landsman and friends really want to, um, they can just take the company that they own, which has got the database and pays for staff and all the rest of it, um, and get rid of you in the same way they got rid of me and all the others um, back in 2016. Nevertheless, I say I do wish you wish you luck. I know that a lot of people learn through experience, so I think even if you do end up losing, I think people will learn a valuable experience. Um, and I hope that what we can really do then is come up with a proper program that unites people, partly within the Labour Party in terms of internal demands, but most importantly, um, unites our class to fight for socialism. So I'll just finish with um, what I think the demands need to be, but Ford Momentum, Labour Left Alliance, the whole lot of us need to, need to unite upon. Um, I think internally within the Labour Party, it has to be for open selection. We don't want any Lee Drennans going against it. Uh, it has to be to scrap the National Policy Forum, which is frankly a joke. Uh, and policy has to be set by, the, um, by our conference. We need to end the rule of councillors in many local authorities where they... Um, uh, they, they also run the, um, the selections of, of councillors and um, what used to be called the Labour, camp, uh, Labour campaign forums. We need to go back to having members and affiliates deciding local policy, um, selecting the councillors and holding those councillors um, to account based on policy decided not by councillors themselves, but by the members and affiliates of the, the local area. In the past, it used to be called a district Labour Party. Uh, which was used to good effect in Liverpool back in the day. Um, we need to have a fair and just an accountable disciplinary system. I think that probably goes without saying. And actually, we need to democratise our trade union link as well. So that means getting involved with the trade unions and making sure trade union leaders don't cast millions of votes um, in the way that suits their backroom deals rather than, than, than suits their own actual members. Um, and in terms of the key things that we need to unite upon um, for socialism, and I think it's really been brought home with this coronavirus we've been living through, and which I, I've, I've been I've been work, working through. Um, what what we've really discovered is that workers make society's wheels turn, and the crime in society at the moment is that although workers do that, they don't control society. It's just they're ordered about by a capitalist class through uh, private, private ownership of the main parts of the economy uh, and bureaucratic management of the, um, the publicly owned bits of the economy. So our, our real demand, if we're talking about socialism and uh, having the ability to uh, stop, stop the capitalist class um, getting rich off our backs is we need public ownership of the main sectors of the economy. 
but we need to stick them under workers' control as well. Um, and if we've got that, then we can plan our way through the climate emergency we're going to have to go through, any pandemic emergencies that may that may arise, uh, and we can get, we can get and we can guarantee uh, genuine equality for all. So for me, they're the sort of baseline principles. Um, and I think if we're firm on those, the various tactical discussions about what organisation to be a part of and when can kind of be worked out as we go. But I think for forward momentum, they need to really take on board what I'm, I'm saying with those demands. And I think we need to uh, work with everyone across the left to try and realise those. Um, hopefully we'll be doing that with you as the leadership momentum as well. Um, but if not, uh, I think you're best uniting with, with the Labour Left Alliance and, and, and Don't Leave Organised than you are with uh, the John Landsmans and the Lee Drennans in, in Momentum, should they hold on to it um, and their shrinking uh, database. So um, I'll, I'll leave it there. Hopefully that generates a bit of discussion and um, look forward to the rest of the meeting. Thank you. I should have thought so. Thank you, Alec. That was uh, very well put. Indeed, the uh, Labour Left Alliance is um, in, in the process of planning a meeting on uh, NEC elections and the minimum platform as described by Alec is, is something that is very much required to revolutionise the selection of left-wing candidates, I believe. Uh, at the moment, they're just accountable to themselves. They're elected as individuals on no partic uh, particular platform at all. So that definitely needs to be uh, politicised. Um, last speaker from the platform is Shona Jemfrey, who is uh, also a forward momentum candidate. Uh, she's from Bristol. And I'd like to encourage comrades now in the audience that if you want to speak, click the button, uh, raise hand. Don't just raise your hand because I can't see you, um, but click that little blue button. Oh God, five hands gone up straight away. Excellent. I will then make you into panelists and then you can uh, come on the screen and, and speak. So uh, welcome Shona. Nice to meet you. Hi, uh, yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes, very well. Cool. Um, yeah, my Wi-Fi is quite dodgy, so um, if you can't at any point, please do shut, um, shut it out. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for having me, and it is brilliant to see so many people here having this discussion. And I agree with a lot with what Alan and Alec have said. I mean, it won't surprise you with Alan, but I mean, we hadn't met each other before we were both selected as candidates, which I think goes to show forward momentum, how genuinely open this has been, you know, it's not kind of a clique about who knows who and all the buddies will get selected. It was it's quite a rigorous process. Um, I think this is a really difficult time for the left because we're all still regrouping after the general election and the leadership election, but it is a really good time to think about what we need moving forward um, and what we need from organisations like Momentum and Labour Left Alliance and all the other ones that I'm sure we're all part of. Um, yeah, so I'll just introduce myself. So I'm Shona. I'm one of the candidates in the South West and South East. Um, I joined the party under Jeremy Corbyn, joined Momentum very quickly afterwards, been involved in various positions in Momentum and in Labour. Um, and at the nomination meeting, my CLP backed Rebecca Long Bailey and John Barber, which I'm pleased with. Um, and like a lot of people, I was initially quite impressed with Momentum and excited by it. And I think it has achieved some quite important um, things, particularly around the election organisation, um, you know, mobilising that number of activists and sending them to the marginals when, you know, the right and centre of the party wanted to play really safe. And um, that's the reason we had the games in 2017 was because of momentum and other organisations, other left organisations pushing. Um, so, and I think the question about can momentum be reformed? I mean, yes, I think it can be reformed. Like, um, like you said, there will be massive obstacles. But I think it also needs to be reformed because we have to be battle ready for what's coming next. Like the political and economic landscape has changed so much. Like February feels like a million years ago because everything is changing so quickly. It's going to keep changing. Nobody really knows what things will look like after lockdown. But that's also our opportunity in the meantime to do our best to change the narrative and change the story. And that's why we're all here tonight rather on our 10th Zoom call this week, probably, rather than sipping beers in you know, whatever sunshine we can find in our homes. So the lockdown is a real period of crisis. And, that, and as we all know, crises often reveal cracks in the systems and open up opportunities for change. 
and we on the left we have to be in the strongest possible position to, um, ready to you know push for actual real reform and push for any victories we can get that will improve working people's lives and momentum I think is still a really strong tool that we can't afford to just ignore or throw away which is why I'm really glad we're having these discussions like it's still got 25,000 members which is a hell of a mailing list and the reputation I think as Alec was talking about that's been affected I think that's because people lost respect for it and I think that's why we have this brilliant opportunity with John Lansman stepping down and hopefully genuinely and you know we won't know until a few months go by or whatever at the end of the elections but hopefully genuinely stepping away and we've got a chance for new faces new you know um new leadership people who have been through the rank and file and who have door knocked and been foot soldiers and have and sort of know what works on the ground and what doesn't momentum's also in good financial shape um and i know um, I know of quite, a, you know, I know several comrades myself who have said Momentum's not for us, and I'm sure there's many people on this call who have, you know, who were members of Momentum and have now left. I know there will be people who are still Momentum members or who are Momentum members and Labour Left Alliance members, and that's fine. Um, and yet Momentum, I mean, no organisation is perfect tool. Momentum is certainly not a perfect tool, but it's still one of the most powerful tools we've got. It's still one of the biggest organisations on the left and I think at this point when we have this window of opportunity to try and change it I think it would be foolish for us to turn our backs on it and that because we can be members of different groups we can you know our loyalty should never be just to one particular name or one particular brand it sh we should be using all the you know we should be using these as, as tools to get what we need which at the end of the day is you know, as radical reform as we can to, um, you know, empower the workers and to save the planet, basically. Um, the, and so, yes, yeah, so this is a key time we can use to fight for the momentum we envision. And I think Alan and Alec have already laid out some really good ideas about what that could be. Um, and someone put in the chat about, um, you know, the, the 25,000 members, a lot of that is paper membership. And again, I think that's because a lot of people are disengaged from it are turned off by you know the internal debates um, as important as they are and by the diff, you know all the different elections that have happened you know like Brenda from Bristol not another one people get you know people have so, you know we we all you know find it really interesting and exciting and or you know or we, we sort of feel unable to look away which is why we're all here but we need to be able to reach out to um, you know, people who aren't particularly interested in politics, and we need to be able to show them and demonstrate in real, you know, in, in real life, um, real examples of how um, you know how socialism can change can change their lives for the better. So things I'll stop rambling on that. Things that I think we can we need to improve the way we organise on the left, particularly in momentum. We need to start engaging the public in a different way because it's a different era. Um, you know, we're not, Jeremy Corbyn's first leadership election was what, five years ago now, so things have moved on massively. We need to adapt and change our tactics and not, not in like a selling out, but as in like we have different things to focus on now because we're not on election sitting and we won't probably won't be for another few years. So the things that I think um, that I want to see in momentum and I think, you know, and someone asked what happens if you know, you, you, you don't get all of your all of your slates uh, elected on. I think that's what Alan was saying about like people actually getting together and just getting stuff done. Um, you know, there's, you know, I think I would hope that whoever gets elected, if it's a mixture of forward momentum and momentum renewal and maybe whoever else, that, you know, we would be, there's, I think there's a lot that we have in common with momentum renewal, at least with some of the candidates. I don't agree with some of the decisions they've made and some of the people on that, Late, but I think that there's people on there I could very happily work with and that's what we need. So obviously we need better internal democracy um, that should in change procedures so members get much more say about big decisions like the um, like so that we're not left with a binary yes or no decision around endorsement like happened with the leadership election. Uh, we need to amend the constitution. Um, NCG members need to be more accountable to members because I think the reason that momentum has lost power and not respect is because it's not staying in touch with people on the ground. Um, and I think, yeah, open selections is a huge thing and something that has been a massive battle for the last few years. And some of the 
people who have been really involved in that battle are involved in Forum of Momentum, so Labour international activists and the FBU. Um, we also need to look at how the regions are divided up and we need to try and change that if possible, because at the minute, Scotland and Northern Ireland, where I'm from originally, um, and Yorkshire are all lumped in with the international and it's kind of this catch-all that's like left for whoever else we kind of couldn't get round to finding a group for. And that's just not really good enough because someone from, you know, I don't know, someone from Korea isn't able to represent the views of people in York that effectively. So that's something that needs a massive reworking. Um, momentum candidates should be decided by local momentum members. Um, members should have much more say, voting say over pri um, the campaigns and the priorities that momentum have. Um, and so I'm just looking at my notes, trying to make sure I don't run out of time. Yeah, we should have momentum's constitution already promises a digital democracy platform, so this should be developed and used more. Um, to have proper discussions and policy labs and regular online ballots. There should be regular meetings between the NCG representatives and members in the region. We do need closer working with the unions, um, including community unions and the smaller unions where possible, because this is often where people get their first real taste of what we achieve when we come together. So union membership is more important than ever. Um, providing more publicly accessible political education um, and empowering and building up local momentum groups and making mailing lists and funding directly available to local momentum groups because this is something that's incredibly frustrating when you're trying to organize locally and you have to wait ages to get an email out to your members you don't have the, that access you have to go through central channels and we need to be trusting our local groups to actually do this and empowering them and going to them and saying like what does your community need what could Momentum be doing to show them how socialism can make a real difference on the ground to them? Because that's how we're going to get people interested. Um, groups should have access to a campaign fund. We need to be training and promoting the next generation of socialist MPs. You know, we need more Zara Sultanas. We need, um, because, and a lot of people would be really good, but they won't put themselves forward unless they're actively encouraged and pushed Otherwise, you get the same faces appearing again and again, and that's no good for democracy. Um, providing any training that members are asking for. Um, but yeah, and just I think the big thing is turning outwards to the communities around us. So establishing local momentum groups where there aren't ones, rejuvenating them, rebuilding them, giving them actual power, helping them actually achieve things. So in um, Bristol, we have a really active good branch of the, <coughs> of the National Food Service, which is a proper socialist organization that is providing free, free meals to people during the pandemic, and it's not means tested. And that's the sort of thing we should be trying to promote around the country. Whatever projects, whatever campaigns, local or local communities need, momentum and labor should be in there promoting that so then when it comes to you know policy decisions when it comes to elections people are saying oh yeah well i know those moment i know those labor guys i know those left guys those momentum guys they're you know they're the ones who are helping us out on the ground level it's not just politicians talking westminster that's how if we're going to have radical change we need to get many 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 more people politicized and many more people interested in politics and understanding how politics has a direct influence on their everyday life. And through examples like that and things through like community unions like ACORN, renters unions, um, the you know, IWW, that's how we get people, that's how we get people, you know, excited and involved in seeing that there is an alternative because we've got so many crises now. We've got the pandemic, we've got the you know, there's a, probably another recession incoming. We're going to have to fight austerity again, tooth and nail. We've got, and then we're going to we have the climate crisis going on. So we need to be unified and we need to be using every organization and tool available at our disposal to fight back and to empower people. Anyway, I think that's probably my time. So I'll stop now. So I got. Thank you very much, Shona. That was very useful. Um, I've just seen a comment from uh, Alan Gibbons to, uh, in a chat, which I totally agree with. We need a single umbrella group of the left for the NEC elections. It's well overdue. 
there is still the center-left grassroots alliance it's still hanging on <laughs> by a thread. I think there's an attempt to democratize it or change the constitution, but to be honest to us, it looks like it should be ripped up and, and started again. So if comrades from Forward Momentum are interested in doing that, we'd certainly be interested as well. And we have also made a start of that and we'll, I'm sure we'll discuss in future. So uh, now just a reminder, if you want to speak from the floor, please click the button that says raise hand and I will make you into a panelist and then you can intervene and speak. Uh, three minutes, please. Um, we have uh, quite a few people who've got their hands up and we want to give the main speakers, uh, the three main speakers, a chance to, to reply to some of the points. So I'm bringing in uh, Carmen first now. If you could introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for all your contributions. I joined Momentum in 2016 uh, because of the chicken uh, coup. I have had a, I joined the Labour Party eight years ago when John Smith was a leader. Um, for me, the problem is about, you know, don't live organised, is that we have waste for years and we really didn't organise. Uh, in my mo local Momentum group, it was very much about uh, not fighting the right, leaving the right, doing because, you know, otherwise uh, we were going to damage uh, Corbyn, uh, you know, we need to be quiet, we need to be, you know, very much circumspect, and now Corbyn is no longer there. And I don't see in the left, I mean, to be honest, and perhaps it's because I come from a completely different political culture than we don't have a stiff upper lip, what we have is a very stiff neck and very stiff knees. We don't bow down and we don't kneel. And it's, it's still, it's like momentum one, you know, to help Kira Starmer to get to government. I have been through Blair. Blair was no good for the working class. When Margaret Thatcher uh, put the pull to us, we rioted, we took on the street and we brought Margaret Thatcher down. We see in France the left bringing Macron down with a very big majority. So for me to have Kira Starma and to carry on pleading unity when clearly the guy doesn't believe in unity. I mean, what unity? When he's not suspending people pending investigation than allegedly throw, you know, an election to the Tories. I mean, do you honestly believe that it could be unity? Because I don't think it can be. So if Momentum, I agree, Momentum have been very good as a campaign organizing tool, but I don't feel like campaigning for certain people. So I am going to take a leave of the US labor movement and you know, I am going to support candidates that I agree with and I can see that can make a difference and the rest, I really don't care. And that's my position and as to forward Momentum, I don't know, obviously I have joined forward Momentum. I will give it, you know, a try. But somehow I am not hopeful. I have to, you know, to be honest about it. But why not? Give it a try. Thanks, Carmen. Uh, Stan Keeble next. Unmute yourself, please. Looks like a majority from Hammersmith then. Me and Carmen are in the same local momentum group. Um, would you believe? Um, so, what's that? Maybe, yeah. yeah, there you are. Couldn't see myself from it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I was glad that uh, Alec uh, talked about socialism. I think Alan's got a similar approach from his mentions in the, in the chat column, because we do need to think about where we're aiming for, you know. Um, is it just to make a change in the Labour Party, or are we trying to change society? And it's, obviously the two things are linked, but... Um, what you're what you're aiming for really determines how you do it um <clears throat> what happened in well in moment, i mean first of all i didn't join labor um because of corbyn I, I joined under blair 2006 i think when i finally decided to jump in but um uh, after spending several years as a nalgo rep on the local committee the local uh, general committee um, then we got a situation with uh, Corbyn and that, and it's in Corbyn's time that I got expelled for being a Marxist. Good God. Um, that's right. And so that's not allowed, according to the same people that are running the witch hunt um, for all sorts of, uh, in all sorts of devious ways. What is noticeable is that 
the whole business, setting momentum up and then changing it drastically. Uh, remind me what month it was, January 2017, was it? Um, the, the bureaucratic coup by landsman. That was done with Jeremy's blessing. Uh, this is the thing, you know, that don't imagine that uh, all the nasty things that Alec described about uh, Corbyn, about uh, Landsman rather, he's done it by and large um, with with Jeremy's blessing and uh, or perhaps sometimes with McDonald's blessing. I mean, which is, the, is it the same, you know? Um, so, uh, because you remember that winter, that winter there was during the Christmas and New Year break, uh, there, there was a, um, uh, what do you call it, voting online. Do you like digital voting or not? You know, that kind of question. And that was used as an excuse immediately afterwards to destroy the conference that we never got. So I was a member of the London Momentum uh, Committee, the regional committee in London, which was abolished on January the 10th. Um, and uh, that, but at the same time, of course, um, Labour Left Alliance now is not calling for people to leave Momentum, is it? Um, it, it's, uh, you know, some momentum groups have come into the Labour Left Alliance and some operate totally independently of anybody. Some left groups operate independently and, OK, so we can try to bring people together and there's a value in what you do locally, that's true. But the main question is that we need, uh, the type of organisation we need has got to be one that controls its representatives. So the big question in Labour is, you know, what happens to the MPs? You put somebody on the career ladder, they become a councillor, they become an MP, and then they say, oh, I represent the public, right? And they forget about who put them there and they don't have to abide by any socialist policies because maybe that's not what the majority of the public want, you know, and they can-, they can, you, can you start to wind up, Stan, please? I'll, I'll wind up. So I think that's the big question in Labour. And obviously it's got to be, as comrades have said, you know, that to get a democratic society and to get the democratic Labour Party the left has to be organized democratically and when it, just in going back to the MPs you know the MPs should be subordinate to the party at the moment they think they own and run the party don't they that's got to be the big question okay. thank you Stan um, before I bring in Rika um, can I remind comrades a lot of comrades are posting comments just to panelists I presume you want all attendees to see it so make sure that you post to panelists and attendees. Um, if you have particular questions, ideally put them in the Q&A rather than the, the chat. And hopefully the panelists will look at the Q&A also and be able to answer some of them. If you could give a quick intro um, when you start speaking, that would be fantastic. And please try to stick to three minutes. Hello, Rika. Hi. Um, thank you very much, Tina. Yes. And, um, you know, I think it's a very stimulating um, discussion um, and Alan has said and, and others have said um, with regards to democracy not being an add-on um, which I completely agree with um, and it, it, it really does grieve me to say this this uh, this however this caveat we are where we are now um, prior to the forthcoming NEC elections and other internal reforms that we want to see um, mo most urgently and as we it's an argument really for a very deep and strong unity of, of the left as extensive and as tight as possible and the reason for this is because um you mentioned at the beginning tina that um somehow or other um and we don't know the ins and outs but a deal has been done whereby landsman reckons um, with whoever he's been dealing with, and I don't know who, um, that he wants to keep the seat that he has on the NEC. He would be on the left, um, but that's, a, you know, I, I'm not sure how valuable that is. If, and, and this is the if, this is the argument for unity, if we do have a solid, um, united left slate, as it were, um, then we have to win all the other eight seats. There are nine available. Um, Landsman would be one of nine. Um, and so the demand for left unity might well be harder for 
some of the momentum loyalists and um, they might need to think harder i did join momentum i haven't been active at all um but but it's not impossible and that that's my argument is that we, we are where we are and and the argument for a united left slate um is even stronger um if um if we're going to abide with the idea uh, it might be hard to swallow that somehow a deal has been done um for landsmen to have one of those nine seats that's what i want to say thank you thank you rika um phil pope please who's the chair of the labor left alliance Hi, thanks tina yeah I've put, a, I've put a brief question in the chat which i hope panelists can see and come back on about what's happening across the country but yeah i just wanted to make a few points about them kind of uh, i'll come back to the question of the meeting i'll make a couple of points about what's happened over the last few years um so just so people know where i'm coming from um i joined momentum in 2015 before i joined the labor party um, i was in left unity at the time so um and i helped set it up in bristol like we had a weird weird constitution back then with hubs and spokespeople but I, I chaired one of the first meetings we held in bristol and it was i thought it was really exciting um and um so i'm quite invested in it i'm still a member and i really hope forward momentum going to do well so uh, we can talk for a long time about what's happened and pick things apart but um i just wanted to make the point like I think the 2017 general election was a really crucial point because Labour did quite well, but it was really a poison chalice in a lot of ways because people didn't take the right lesson from it. And after, t after that, everyone started thinking, oh, let's just compromise and have one, like, one last heave and we'll get into government. And then all the compromises started one after another, chipping away at people's enthusiasm, chipping away at people's faith in the project and it just built up over the months and years and it introduced a really bad factualism into the left as well people started saying you either support momentum or you're against us like we've got a so we've got into this really bad like oh we've all got to stick together like if you criticize what's going on you're like one of the enemy now and it sort of really went wrong um, around that time um now back to the question of the meeting like is it possible to reform yeah yeah it's possible um and, uh, and and it might not be possible the thing is the way you go about it you've got to organize in a way that doesn't exhaust you and burn you out and demoralize everyone you've got to make sure you're doing it in a way that whatever the outcome you still built something win or lose and you've got to think about what's the next step if we lose what's the next step if we win what's the next step because if you win you're going to come under loads of pressure and loads of things will happen really quickly so it's always about thinking where the campaign's going and not just not just focusing on what's straight in front of you but thinking about the next steps so um yeah i mean i think the crucial thing about for momentum is it's made a commitment to democracy and actually doing grassroots organizing and actually listening to grassroots and not just thinking oh, we've got loads of members, so it's grassroots. No, you've got to do what the grassroots tell you to do, or it's not grassroots. So that's a crucial thing you've done. Um, I must say, it, it's all happened really quickly, the forward momentum stuff. Um, if it happened a bit slower, I hope a lot more people would have been persuaded to back it more fully and like more people to stand as candidates. It, um, yeah, it sort of came on our horizon like just a few weeks ago. But um, it's not not to knock it, but um, um, and I think there's a really crucial split now. There's so many people on the left that I think they view momentum as a dangerous experiment with democracy. They don't seem to have uh, proposed anything more radical than momentum or proposed to improve it. They seem to be retreating back into the old politics that's failed for a long time there are a lot of people as have been mentioned who want to return to striking deals between powerful people and then trying to mobilize support that's the wrong way around we've got to stick with listening to the grassroots and 
forward momentum's made a really, really positive um, contribution towards that. And we can't go back to the CLGA, like Left Alliance absolutely wants to get a better process to agree the NEC, not just put, stitch the CLGA back together. We've got to keep moving. And um, yeah, when you're trying to do something radical, you've got to keep pressing forward. The minute you start standing still, it's uh, the next thing you'll be going backwards. And that's a mistake we've made in the past. All right, thanks. Quite a few times. Thank you, Phil. Okay, Ray Wenburn, please. Oh, hello, thank you. Um, my name's Roy, I'm in New Momentum and I'm a member of the uh, Labour Left Alliance. Um, I think w w we are in, in, in a situation where we've got you know, more left groups than I've got fingers on my hand. And uh, we have to seriously think about where we are and how we're all going to work together. Um, one thing someone said to me many years ago, when you've got difficult decisions to make, you say, in whose class interest is, is this decision being made? And I think, in, in, as some of the comrades have said, some of our representatives uh, haven't really stood by that yardstick and have made decisions that perhaps have been in the interest of themselves or some other, sort of, some other motive. Um, I, uh, I agreed with most of what Alex said, um, but I don't kind of understand where you get to a point where you can say, uh, will it work? Will this group work? I, I've, and, 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 and you've got to look, I think, from where it came from. Uh, momentum was uh, 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 represented all the new people that had joined the Labour Party and uh, had been inspired that we were fighting against austerity and that we were uh, socialists again. Uh, uh, that, that was, uh, the word was re, 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 reinvigorated as well. And, um, and, and, and it did an enormous amount of good work and it infused groups all around the country to get together and join up and campaign and all that stuff that went on. And, uh, of course, the landsman coup and the decisions that he was making behind closed doors wasn't immediately apparent to most of the membership. It gradually got un unfolded, and we found what I uh, uh, um, what the disastrous decisions that he was making, uh, not on our behalf, uh, but just uh, uh, from his own position. Um, and so w we all agree uh, how bad that was and, and, and how devastating the effect of his, he, he was. Um, that said, I think as well, the comrades have already said that, um, of course, you know, the, the leadership of the Labour Party uh, take key responsibility as well about what, what has happened um, it, it, to, to the party and to that situation. Um, and so I just say that I I looked at the um, I looked at the forward momentum uh, uh, ideas and suggestions, and I, and I thought that they were again a, a, a group that appeared to be wanting to reignite that enthusiasm of of the momentum of of the momentum group, and we and you know we have to. Uh, as socialists, we have to look at things as they are, not as they would like likely to be. Um, and, and and the point is that, that momentum is still a massive organisation. A lot of people didn't leave momentum, not joined any of the other groups. Some have joined the other groups and remained momentum members. Um, and uh, it's it's still going to be a very very powerful organisation, uh, uh, whether we like it or not. Um, and if we've got an opportunity to actually influence that organisation. If, if there's an opportunity to change it, to stop it becoming and going even further to the right and becoming even, even worse, I think that we should, uh, we should take that on board. And, you know, there's a lot of things being said about Lansman still putting a few strings and it's a lot of the old guard, you know, that are in, in, the, in that, the new group that's being formed. And so I don't think we could trust that group at all. I think that the, what I've seen so far from Forward Momentum has been really inspiring. And I think we should all go behind it and hope it works. 
And then we, as I said before, uh, all do what's in the best interest of the working class. That's, that's, our, that's where we, we, we start from. And we, we look at how we can all work together and all find a niche for ourselves in the different groups uh, uh, and different attitudes. I, thought, I, I think that we can find there's a way for everybody to work together. Uh, but this particular debate is about um, supporting, I think, forward momentum. And I think that's what we should do, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. Yes, I must admit, I am toying with the idea of rejoining momentum in this debate. Oh, maybe others will as well. OK, uh, Marion, please. Yeah, I, th I think this has been a really important discussion tonight. For me, democracy is key. And I personally won't get involved in forward momentum. I haven't got the energy and I, I, I want to put my energy into something where I think it will be more successful. I hope forward momentum is successful. But I think some one of the comrades earlier mentioned the role of the trade unions and I keep banging on about it. We need to democratise our own unions as well, because some of those dirty deals wouldn't be done. You know, there's no way that um, that person who's just got uh, the GS should have become GS. And the, the role of the trade unions on the NEC is important in that as well. But for me, the key thing we also need to think about is I think there's going to be real openings coming at the end when, when lockdown's over and, and Lots of people that I'm talking to are asking questions. You know, this crisis is making a lot of people that aren't necessarily political think. And we have to tap into that as well. And, we, and I think the key thing is also having our demands ready for that as well. And I think if we can do that, we can actually go forward in a big way. And I think the key thing is um, the whole question of austerity. I was on a, a thing yesterday and I think it was John Trickett produced some slides which actually showed that most of the um, money that the banks got had already been paid back. And what all the austerity did was make the rich richer. And, you know, that kind of idea we need to get across to people. That really all the suffering that we've had over those years was unnecessary for working class people. These kind of ideas we have to get when we're talking to people. Because a lot of people might... You know, a lot of people, we've got to win the argument that we shouldn't be paying for the crisis, the, the current crisis that we're in. So these are the kind of things we need to do. So I don't think we, I think it's important we try and get the democracy in the Labour Party and on the left and actually work together so that we can have a slate because it's too important not to. But at the same time, I think we have to make sure that we're key on why, we, why we're involved in the Labour Party or on the left in the Labour Party and that we also have to work outside and build up, um, build up uh, support and fight in our communities for something different. Thanks, Marion. Um, Adam, do you want to come in now? Yes, you put your camera on. I'm spotlighting you. There you go. Three minutes, please. Hi there. Yeah, hi, uh, my name's Adam Booth. I'm uh, with the Socialist Appeal, as well as being a Labour member in Hackney North. And um, I, just, I don't want to repeat anything that's been said, because I agree with a lot of the points that have been made by all the comrades. But I just want to touch on this question of democracy that's come up a lot, um, and, and kind of the, the you know, the, the aims, the principles that we've got to kind of enshrine within, you know, whatever Labour left that we're trying to build, whether it's momentum or, or elsewhere. And I, and I think we've got to look at what actually happened in Momentum, because I think the reason that you had this lack of democracy, this shutdown of democracy by Landsman, it wasn't because simply Landsman was a bad man who hated democracy. I think it was the fact that, that, that Momentum was being taken over by the grassroots. It was moving to the left. It was coming out in opposition to the Blairites and the PLP right wing. And it was demanding radical action. And the problem is that clashed with landsmen, and not just landsmen, but the trade union leaders, and even people like John McDonnell, who wanted to compromise. They wanted to compromise with the right wing of the Labour Party on all of these questions. And it was that that led landsmen to shut down momentum because he was afraid of momentum becoming out of control, pushing the Labour Party to the left, clearing out the Blairites, and actually turning the Labour Party into a proper socialist party. And so I think we've got to look at this question. Democracy isn't an abstract thing. It's a political question. 
And the point is that if you have bad politics, you will have lack of democracy. John Landsman had bad politics. He thought that you could compromise with the right wing of the Labour Party. He thought that you needed slow, steady moves to the left in the Labour Party, rather than a, a break with the, with the Blairites, who had clearly shown from the beginning that they were big business establishment politicians. We should have been clearing them out from day one with open selection, as, as Alex and lots of other people have pointed out. And, but the point is, Landsman wanted to slow and steady. He wanted the, the gradual compromise, and that's what caused the shutdown democracy. So I think rather than talking about democracy in the abstract and saying we need this or that principle, I think we've got to remember these principles are words on paper unless we have the right politics, right? And so we've got to put the political question at the fore. We want socialism. We want socialist MPs. We want socialist councillors. We need open selection to achieve that end. And we've got to, I think the main lesson we've got to learn from the last five years is there can be no compromises with the right wing. They've proved that with the Labour leaked report. And sorry, but the, late, the left wing leaders, they knew about all of these shenanigans. They could have used this report to clear out the Blairites without a split in the party a long time ago, but they didn't do it. So I think this has got to be the take home message. No more compromises, stand firm, open selection, socialist policies, fight for a socialist Labour Party. I think if, if we put that front and central rather than the organizational questions, that's the way we're going to attract workers and youth. It's by talking about socialist policies, not by just saying we've got the perfect constitution or the perfect democratic structures. We need the, we need the most bold, the most militant socialist policies. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Adam. The two go together, don't they? Uh, democracy and program. I'm bringing uh, Jamil now, next. Yeah, hello, thanks. Uh, this is Jamil from Hendon. I just wanted to make a quick point. Uh, I mean, you know, can we talk about momentum, but really, uh, momentum came became uh, came on the back of Corbyn. It was Corbyn getting on the ballot uh, uh, that you know got members to join the large numbers of members that came in because it was because of Corbyn. Momentum obviously set themselves up as a as an organization that's going to support Corbyn, and so a lot of people, you know, a lot of members joined them and you know supported it, became active, and it was actually so it was actually. And Corbyn's back that momentum got uh, got got famous and got the resources. So, but I think um, the problem is at that time nobody realized the structure of the momentum, and uh, I think we've seen that uh, it's not been a democratic organization. And I think if you can't change it, then I think we need to look at, uh, in a different place. Uh, we have to forget momentum unless we can actually change the structure and the constitution of momentum. That's really the point I need to make. Thank you. Jamil, um, Charlie, please. Oh, hello. Um, so, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so, I just wanted to um, say, again, I don't want to sort of like repeat what um, other comrades have uh, basically said, but I just wanted to talk about how, you know, the, dem the democratic structure of an organisation flows from its conceived political ends, but um, you know, the long bloody struggle to um, implement mandatory um, reselection re for our uh, representatives as a precondition for a workers' party committed to socialism for flushing out the Blairites who cultivate their personal fiefdoms, shutting down members in CLP meetings, exemplifies this. Um, if the manoeuvres laid bare in the report over the past few weeks have shown us, um, have, have shown us anything, it's the, the, need, you know, the need for open selections in the party, a fight that we have a duty to continue, not just of MPs, but of all Labour Party officials, including the General Secretary and um, the GLU, who are assumed to have, you know, the sort of neutrality of um, civil servants, if you like. Um, and if a left organisation like Momentum decides to curtail democracy to make concessions for the sake of impossible unity with two wings of the party, as we've experienced, for, um, for, for instance, by abandoning the vote for open selections, um, you know, it shows that, you know, it doesn't share this, this commitment to social, you know, it, it, and it clearly suggests a lack of commitment to socialism and a lack of faith in the rank and file members. And as we've seen, the Blairites, who were totally prepared to scupper the chances of winning an election in 2017 to prevent a Corbyn victory. Um, but I've noticed that, you know, so far both groups have placed a lot of emphasis on organisational questions, but 
a focus on this often indicates a sort of shortcoming in the political and economic education of sort of how to reach socialism. I've, um, and I've, you know, I've seen a renewed emphasis on political education from momentum renewal and forward momentum. But in any case, you know, I think like Marxism should be a central component in political education, which gives us the scientific knowledge of how capitalism works, which is necessary for building a scientific understanding of socialism. And I commend the drive to change momentum for the better as the largest left organization on the scene. Right now, it is a powerful vehicle, but I think more than anything, uh, what the splits, uh, which, well, what the divisions that we've seen in momentum tell us is, you know, that we, the need for a clear program, which I would say is based on the principles of Clause 4, uh, not just the Clause 4 of 1918, but in the words of Tony Benn. I can post it um, later in, in, in the chat if you, if you like to see the, the wording. Um, but the commitment to the establishment of, you know, of actually overthrowing capitalism provides a clear um, sense of direction for policies indicated in Clause 4, uh, rather than a sort of vague commitment to fighting for policies in the spirit of the Corbyn left. And, you know, we have to go for the jugular. Um, and enabling acts, you know, bringing the key industries, meaning the utilities, the land and transport, including banking and finance, into workers' ownership. Um, as you know, Alex Price was, was talking about, you know, the commanding heights, um, rather than just you know nationalisation of uh, of um, debt ridden industry. Um, can you start but, um, up now, Charlie, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, I can finish now if you want. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Uh, Kevin Bean is our last uh, speaker from the floor, and then we'll bring on uh, the main speakers unless anybody else raises their hand now. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Tina. Um, I wasn't here for the early part of the discussion, so my apologies. Uh, many comrades have focused on, I think, quite a key area, which is about democracy, and in particular, the failure of, the, uh, of sections of the Labour left to deal with the question of democracy, and in particular, uh, to, to use ideas of compromise and unity, particularly with the right wing. I mean, we did have a very good chance, particularly during those um, those various attempts at a coup by the um, you know by the right, um, I don't want to compare it to 1917 in Russia, but maybe those were our Korniloff movements, and those were the times when we could have really fought back against the right wing, but instead we spent our time compromising with them, and indeed that that still I think is a problem with people uh, in the in the Labour Party who call themselves on the left. Who are still willing to compromise with the right. So that, uh, that issue of compromise and those very clear, clear demarcations are, I think, quite important. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a member of the Wavertree constituency Labour Party, which is currently involved in something of a turmoil, where essentially the, uh, the momentum leadership has launched an attack upon sections of the left in alliance with the with, with what's left of the right. Um, and there, this is a, a very clear example, I think, of the way things will go. So I think we, we've already seen a section of, um, of uh, momentum. Uh, the Landsmanites have moved over you know, to join in the attacks. And I think that the witch hunt and the attacks on members of the left will, um, you know, will, will be increased. Now, I think that uh, Alan, in uh, one of his um, little um, little tweets or little uh, comments, referred to Miliband's uh, parliamentary socialism, and I think this is is quite a nice way to bring what would have been the normal Thursday night spot spot on the Labour Left Alliance, which is my talks on um, on Labour history, with 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 the current situation, and this I think is the problem of Labourism which is that ultimately many people on the Labour left, when, it, when push comes to shove, that will not really confront the right. That the survival of the Labour Party, the survival of internal party unity is, is, is the sort of be all and end all. And indeed, even, even the appeals to sort of electoral unity, the need to all pull together for a Labour government, that that you know as comrades have said this evening the various uh, uh reports about what sections of the bureaucracy were doing 
we uh, we know we just put that now to one side and say it's time to move on that's the past well unfortunately it's not the past and, and many of these issues of history particularly our failure to confront the right are i think still important for us many of the comrades have talked about linking democracy to socialism and i think again it's our conceptions of socialism and our conceptions of democracy which are really very very important because if we have a conception of, of democracy the free expression of, uh, of political views the mobilization of the working class as being essential to any sort of socialist project then our own internal uh, democracy our own internal labor movement will, re will reflect that and i think that we've 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 often we've too often in the past been involved with electoral stitch-ups with voting for good people uh, to be candidates um, and to you know to go for the least worse option to have a very sort of piecemeal approach and i think you know that that approach has failed us it's disillusioned disillusioned a large section of uh, you know of people who were involved around momentum i mean you know 25000 people momentum had larger numbers of people than that so in a way we've you know we we've been part of a project which far from really mobilizing and and bringing people forward to the struggle we've actually in, in a sense demoralized them so i think we've got to learn from that uh, the real emphasis must be on democracy open selection all the things that the comrades have talked about but linking that to a conception of socialism which is really about fighting for class power um you know and for really confronting the right in the labor party so uh, enter compromise and enter force unity in that way and um i think you know we have to revisit that past i still remain a member of momentum and i'll be voting for comrades like uh, like alan who i know is a very you know a good left socialist and i've you know worked with him in liverpool and so on but we have to be clear on uh on on that end to that spurious compromise and that 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 spurious unity there's been too far too much of that uh, thank you comrades excellent thank you very much kevin that was a very powerful last contribution to from the floor and um, before i bring like back the main speakers now um like just to say a couple of words we've got uh, we've had about up to 70 people in this debate but there's also i've managed to for, for the first time share it live on facebook and there's been another 50 or so people so that's really good we're also putting this uh, video up online uh, tomorrow uh, and I'm sure it's going to be uh, viewed a few more times then. I, th I really enjoyed it. I think it was one of our best webinars we've had so far. Debates are always very useful, I think, to to move forward and to come to, you know, get to the point and get to get to what what, uh, what we can unite on and what we perhaps disagree on. Um, but I think the um, in the medium term, I think is sort of a principled unity over any C election process seems a, seems a very um, coherent or very very clear uh, a campaign that we could perhaps get together with comrades on, uh, not just with a minimum political platform, but also organizing in a democratic way. Because if we don't organize democratically, how can we fight for a, a society that is democratic? It doesn't work unless you practice uh, with democracy. You fight for something quite different. So I'm bringing in now uh, in reverse order, uh, Shona first, if that's okay, then Alec and then uh, Alan as the last person. Yeah, so just doing a sort of some five minutes, coming up. Up to five minutes if you, if you wish. Cool. I'll try and do it quicker because I'm sure everyone has got dinner to go and eat. Um, but yeah, I think that this has been a really, really good discussion and it's been really heartening, like the quality of debate and the, the knowledge that we have. And I think this is what the Corbyn era gave us. It didn't give us the government we wanted. And we're all, you know, I'm still recovering from that, from the, that disappointment. But it gave us a lot of knowledge and experience and comrades who, you know, have been through this. And now we, we know these things. We know how this works. And we, you know, have been to the socialist book groups and we are, are much better versed in understanding how the systemic problems. I think people have been right in that democ democ I think the goal is obviously socialism, isn't it? The goal is socialism, it's not communism. Um, but to get there, we need to inspire and um, empower a huge, much, you know, a huge bigger section of workers in the working class. Um, and we need organize, we need left-wing organisations to take the lead on that because we're not going to get that clearly from, you know, Keir Starmer. 
So we need to be, um, and so we need organizations, but we need people to feel that they can trust the organizations, that they can feel empowered. And that's why we need the democracy, not just because it's a good thing, which obviously it is, but because, you know, the two go hand in hand. It, act, it helps people feel more inspired. They have more ownership. They're more invested. You know, they are willing to trust the organization and then things actually get done. Um, someone has said, you know, what happens if you win? The pressure will be incredible and it will. And I think that's why, you know, I, if, if we get elected, I would be asking all of you to keep us accountable. You know, this is recorded. Thank goodness. So, you know, we can't go back on anything we said here. Not that we should, but you, like you say, the pressure can be incredible. So that's why NCG members need to be held accountable and need to have those regular meetings with local members so that they're having that, um, so that there's that regular feeding in from the grass so it doesn't just wilt away and I think there is a chance to save momentum and there is a chance to turn it around and that's you know hopefully what will happen in the next few weeks. Um, I will just end by reminding everyone if you want to vote in the NCG elections you need to be a paid up member by noon on the 11th of June. So not midnight on the 11th of June, don't leave it till 11 p.m. noon on the 11th of June. So do it sooner rather than later, you'll forget. And you know, you might decide, you know, you might not even be sure who you want to vote for yet or if you want to vote, but at least if you signed up, you have that chance and we might as well give it a go. But thank you so much. Um, and this has been really, this has been really, really educational and really helpful. So thank you everyone. Thank you very much, Shona. I enjoyed that very much as well. Some of us do fight for communism. If it's not, you know, we don't mean Stalinism by it. <laughs> but anyway, let's leave that one there. Alec, please. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I agreed with most things that we've said. Um, Stan um, mentioned the survey that Momentum put out an agreement with Corbyn's office. Um, at the time, uh, Corbyn's secretary was none other than Laura Parker. I don't know if that's um, uh, sort of connected, uh, but it might be. Um, but I think Corbyn basically didn't really have much of a group around him himself. He had to rely on, on others, and those others included like Len McCluskey and Andrew Muddy from the Communist Party and Unite. Uh, and also John Landsman and, 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 and his Momentum database. So I think, I don't know what his personal views were, but I think the people that were doing the work for him certainly had those kind of reformist, gradualist views. And I think he had to go along with that as they were sort of the power that he ended up resting on. Um, uh, yeah, again, I agree with a lot of with what most people said. Uh, Marion made some great points on the trade unions, fully agree. Um, Adam made some excellent points about what that landsman coup represented, which it's what it was an attack on the grassroots because landsman did want to have that gradualist snail's pace, you know, change things bit by bit, hope no one notices it kind of attitude. But the grassroots were like, no, we need to crack on. We're actually suffering under austerity now, so this needs to happen now. Let's let's strike while the iron's hot, um, which is actually far more tactical astute because. I think, as, um, I think as Adam also said, um, there's this big report that came out. And obviously, the, uh, our, our Labour left uh, leaders knew about all the school doubly that was going on pretty much already uh, and basically sat on it um, <laughs> right up to the point where they lost power and couldn't really action it. And then went, oh, look at this terrible stuff that was going on. Um, I don't know why they organised like that, other than the fact that they had this... A gradualist political um, method and uh, it stops from striking while the iron is hot. Um, I, I quite like Kevin Bean's reference to a corner of moments. Um, agreed with most of Charlie's points as well. Um, on Marxism and the Labour Party, um, it's worth noting that that 1945 Labour government, um, actually their NEC republished Marx's Communist Manifesto with a foreword from the Labour Party NEC. I think it was Harold Lasky that wrote the, the foreword. Um, so uh, it's not um, uh, particularly uncommon for Marxism to be in the, in, to the, in, to be in the Labour Party um, and we, we need more of it. Um, I think that was probably, probably coming back to what most people said or what I'd need to say. Um, just to kind of sum it all up, really, in, in terms of the Labour Party at the moment and, and, and since that Corbyn period, 
I would say that the Labour Party is basically, it represents two classes in one. On the one hand, you've got the establishment. On the other hand, you've got um, the working class. And the reason why I say the it represents the establishment is I've got, I've, I kept this quote from Tristan Hunt, if you remember him. Um, and he's quoted as uh, speaking at um, a meeting of Oxbridge students um, shortly after Corbyn took uh, the Labour leadership. Um, and I quote him here, he says, the way you serve the Corbyn leadership is to be as dissenting and creative as possible. You, that's the Oxbridge students, you are the top 1%. The Labour Party is in this shit. It is your job, Oxbridge students, and your responsibility to take leadership going forward. Now that phrase, like the top 1% and whatever, this guy's clearly talking about the ruling class, the establishment, the capitalist class. That That is what the right wing in the Labour Party ultimately represents. And that's why there can be, ultimately, uh, no compromise with them. Um, when you do have to make a compromise, of course, um, which, you know, uh, you have the same sort of situation in trade unions, where obviously I've done trade union negotiating, and obviously you do um, make deals. Um, but the point about those is you take the class balance um, uh, into consideration, and you, you do a deal that leaves your members um, with more confidence um, than, than what they had before. Um, the key thing about the Corbyn uh, scenario was that the balance of class for forces was fully in behind Corbyn. There was no need to compromise. He, he had absolute command and authority uh, from, from the members. So it was, it was one of those times where, you know, uh, the tactically astute thing is to, go, is to strike while the iron's hot. Uh, if the right wing want to whinge about it, you let them. Uh, it might damage you a little bit at the time, but once it's done, it's done. And then you're building on uh, a solid a solid foundation uh, and you can go forward from there. And actually, um, John McDonnell gave a very interesting um, Zoom discussion. Uh, I think it was hosted by Verso Books. I think it was like a Leo Panish, Panich, whatever his name is. He was launching a book and McDonnell was sort of speaking at it, along with Grace Blakely and all these other people. If you listen to McDonald's speech on that, he basically um, admits that they were sort of too soft. Um, uh, and they sort of bottled it because of, of, of the pressure. So I'd, I'd, I'd urge people to sort of dig that, um, that Zoom conversation out and listen to what he's got to say, because I think he basically confirms um, the viewpoint of the grassroots, and it's just a shame that he... Um, didn't see that at the time. Um, hopefully now with um, in back and forward momentum, there's been some kind of change there. But we uh, we wait and see on that one. I think in the, um, to, to finish, I would I would I would urge forward momentum to consider the the points I made about the political points they should be making about socialism and about um, internal internal um, reform in the in the Labour Party. Because even if you do lose, if you have raise those points you will be raising the level of understanding of everyone else involved and um that means that even if you lose your particular battle um you may end up um causing uh or contributing to a bigger victory uh later on down the line um and i'll leave it there thank you thank you alec very important point isn't it that uh, had had they struck while the iron was hot and we had a majority and we could have done things it could be in a very, very different situation. I doubt Dave Evans is going to be as shy about it, or Keir Starmer. Okay, Alan, our last speaker, please. Okay, right. Um, when people say, what's momentum for? I mean, it should be a group assembling as many good socialists as possible, driving the Labour Party to the left, and actually showing in practice what CLP should look like. Engaged in the community, on the picket line, in the trade unions, backing democratic grassroots organization from below. That's what they should be. And the two things go hand in hand. Um, for a time, you know, because momentum stopped being like that, barely met, uh, was actually engaged, as a couple of people said, uh, in uh, unholy united fronts with the right. That was the picture in West Derby. 
uh, lining up with the most reactionary elements in West Derby CLP to try and defeat Ian Byrne. Um, we have to make sure that momentum is recaptured as, an as a democratic grassroots fighting body. Uh, when people say on uh, Corbyn and McDonnell, I don't think there's any doubt. Sometimes you felt, I mean, I'd go into battle if you want on Facebook on some of the Labour Party forum and stuff. And then you find out there'd been a retreat and it incredibly gutting that you'd stuck your neck out and then found the army had left you behind. You know, the, the generals had left you behind. They were under immense pressure. And, it, uh, you know, it is good to see that John McDonnell, I, I saw him talking a Zoom uh, call on it, um, does recognise that. And we have to learn for that. We have to be tougher. And tougher doesn't mean shouty. It means intellectually and organisationally strong. And that is what democracy actually means. Democracy is not a soft, fluffy thing. It's an absolutely rigorous set of proposals to be accountable and to make our leaders accountable. And every one of us should be doing that. And the lack of accountability in how um, continuity momentum was actually selected, I think demonstrates the difference between the two platforms. Um, right, let's see. Yeah, uh, open selection has to be absolutely central. Uh, that is something we have to work towards. And if you want, I think when people say, what's the step for, there's incremental steps. We need to win the NCG of momentum. We need to get as many representatives as possible to press the arguments about grassroots democracy. That has to lead in to unity of all the left so we don't get a repeat of the divisions of the NEC. But even that is not an end in itself. That then means uh, a strong political debate. And you can see some of the elements. One of them is going to be the panel reporting back about the leaked document. And if there are not um, you know, strong measures taken against those people, I think the next time we have a conference, it's going to be a huge debate. And it should be a huge debate. It's about the entire future of the Labour Party and what it constitutes. The second one is going to be renters. I mean, Thangam Debonair, to be honest, it was almost comically bad her interview. It was a scandal. You know, Keir Hardy attacks landlordism. And we are, I, we are talking to momentum now in Liverpool, and we're going to be stopping evictions, and we're going to be on the right side. Always with the rank and file, never with their oppressor. Um, and on Kashmir, we are not going to have anything to do with the uh, people saying that we should leave it to the Indian Parliament, a unilateralism of the BJP with the fascist RSS at its heart. These are concessions that have got to be fought. We've protested about all of them, but we're, we're quite impotent at the moment because CLPs are not meeting. And we've also, in a Zoom call regionally, um, the CLPs have been saying we should be able to meet again because there's an asymmetry of power in the party at the moment. The leadership can meet and change policy. We cannot subject that policy to accountability. So I'd, um, I'd ask people to, to vote. It's a first step in that long process to rebuild the left. And then... <laughs> If you want to say what in the end of it is for, I'd say this, um, Ladbrokes, Bookies, just on the road on Walton Vale from where I live, somebody has written up James Connolly's quote, we are moderate, we only want the world. That's what we're in it for, comrades. We want the world for all the people of the world, commonly owned, um, clear skies, you know, transport that is collectively owned and is not polluting us. You know, we want a society where public well-being comes before private profit. And that's why, for the first time in my life, I'm standing first. Oh no, I, I was NUT president for, for Nosley, but I mean, I, I never wanted to be on a leadership body of anything, to be honest. I just felt now we had to stand up for it, get off our knees, you know, and stand up for something. Thank you very much, uh, Alan. I hugely enjoyed this whole debate. It was very informative, but also quite, quite entertaining uh, in parts. 
um, on the question of, you know, democracy is not going to be fluffy. Uh, it, it's not a fluffy thing, quite the opposite, actually. It's really hard work uh, fighting for democracy and having democratic structures. Yeah. Um, just going to mention that uh, six momentum branches have joined the Labour Left Alliance. If you do join with your group, you can you automatically get a representative on our, our organization group, which is the main decision making body between conferences. Um, I, uh, yes, I would like to just say thank you again to our speakers and everybody in the audience. That was very, uh, very useful. And I'm sure we are going to talk to each other very soon. Good luck with the elections. As I said I am toying with rejoining momentum to vote for you guys, but not quite sure. It is a, it's a hard moral thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. Have a very good evening, everybody, and speak soon. Bye bye.